the new Audi S4 Avant, the car you'll ever need. The S4 is one of the world's last Q cars. Subtle looks, but enough punch to see off a Kaiman. Big space, with neat and tidy handling. Lots of pace, in all weathers. It's never the first car you park in the dream garage, but even if you had an underground bunker brimmed with Bugattis and Paganis, you'd use an S4 more days than a platinum-plated Lamboseg, indeed. Seems a weird move, doesn't it? Audi was caught just as red-handed as its Volkswagen parent in the Dieselgate emissions dodging scandal of 2015 and beyond. The UK has responded by shunning diesel cars faster than evicted Love Island contestants. So far in 2022, diesel's share here has shrunk by almost 20% compared to 2020. And it tanked in 2018 too. Because it sees a future in cars that have deep reserves of torque to pump them along, and emit less CO2 than a car with a petrol habit, while traveling further on a tank. Torque is much more useful in the real world than peaky top-end power. Especially in a roomy family wagon. Sounds familiar? They are the reasons that Europe fell painfully in love with TDIs in the first place. And still quite compelling, if you're not a knee-jerk politician, officially, it'll do 39.8 miles per gallon and emit 166G kilometer of CO2 on the new WLTP testing cycle. On the old testing regime, any diesel that sunk below 50 miles per gallon would have been a laughing stock, but the latest lab tests are supposed to be more realistic. As a result, you'll stand a healthy chance of not just matching what Audi's website claims, but beating it. Our S4 Avant test car was regularly claiming over 40 miles per gallon. The old petrol V6 rarely climbed above 30 to the gallon. Job done dot it doesn't sound like much at all, really. There's a vaguely six-pot rumble in the middle distance when you clog it. It sounds more expensive than a four-cylinder diesel by a mile, but hardly justifies brandishing four polished tailpipes. Then again, the old petrol V6 was hardly a vocal event. At times, it was even a bit drony, in dynamic mode. A tad artificial, like it was singing through auto-tune. So forget the noise argument. You're missing out on negligible entertainment, and going another couple of hundred miles on a tank dot it's more leaden on turn-in than it used to be. Ironic, really, when the old S4 was launched Audi bragged that the new engine saved 14 kilograms of front axle weight. Whoops. But, that's been compensated for by a simply biblical wallop of torque. In the old car, you got 369 pounds feet and that felt like a LOT. In the new S4, you've got 516 pounds foot that's more than a McLaren 600 LT churns out. Not this time. The S4 Sport Differential, which claims to shuffle torque to the wheel that can best deploy it, has been awakening in the S4 TDI. Before now, the car was so tractable it was impossible to feel the difference doing its thing. But now it's got to deal out a volcano of torque, there's a sense that the rear wheels are powering the car out of a corner, as the body hunkers down. It's really punchy, and feels agile on the throttle. Like a smaller, wieldier Square 7 in fact, which is one of Top Gear's favorite fast big SUVs. Quick enough. On paper, it's got 342 brake horsepower, a couple of nags down from the petrol swigging S4. On the clock, it does 0 to 62 miles per hour in 4.9 seconds, identical to the petrol version. The top speed remains pegged at 155 miles per hour. Does it feel as quick? No. But that's not the engine's fault, it's aided by electric anti-lag turbo technology powered by a 48-volt mild hybrid battery system. At speed the S4 can coast engine off for up to 40 seconds. Meanwhile, stop-start engine response is instant and the turbo's rarely caught napping. What lets the side down most is the 8-speed automatic gearbox. Audi, like the whole VW group, and other manufacturers besides, has really struggled to make its once peerless autos behave when shifting on a new WLTP-friendly strategy. It's swift enough on the paddles, but the automatic mode is bizarre. Too keen to shift to high gears early on, it slurs the kickdown, and selects second or even first gears for mild prods at the throttle. What's the point in having 8 speeds and all that torque if the gearbox thinks it's connected to a food blender? The rest of the S4 is what we liked heartily before. The boot's huge, it's comfortable, the interior is plush and sophisticated, though we'd swap the new touchscreen for the old ClickWheel MIT button setup in a heartbeat. 
The new Honeycomb Mesh Grille looks tidy too, sporty, but not at the expense of the S4 Stealth. Shifting the S4 to diesel has also done Audi a favor, it's put some daylight it between it and the petrol V6 RS4, which has struggled to come across as more than an S4+. Plus. Well, here's the rub. In making the S4 exactly what it needed to be to fit into the range, it sort of lost its edge. The S models used to be RS light, but now they feel more like uber top spec cooking models. The noise it makes is interesting but cultured, the way it goes about being surprisingly fast, surprisingly unenthusiastic. It's a brilliant car in lots of ways, but a sober suited, lightly disguised hooligan, it is not. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that I'd probably end up either going for a top spec non S and saving some money, or waiting for the RS4 for something with a less complex personality.